Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to test a RESTful API in Node. In a previous video, we created a REST API where you could post notes to, like this, and we can see it was posted successfully. And then you can retrieve the notes by doing a get on notes. And these are being inserted into a Mongo DB, DB database here. So today we're going to test that RESTful API. And we are going to mock the behavior of the Mongo DB database so that the tests don't care about the state of the database. So completely unit tests. So let's get on ahead and get started. Before we begin, I'm just going to run through what the code looks like to begin with. So we have this server.js file. And this server file, first of all, connects to the database here. And this file just looks like this. And connect is returning a promise. Um, and it is connecting to a MongoDB database. And once we're connected to that, then the app begins listening for requests here. And we are accepting get requests and post requests. And this is the part of the application we're going to be testing. So before we get started, we're going to install some of our dependencies. So I'm going to stop the application and we're going to install Mocha, Chai, Supertest, and Mock Goose. So we're going to install those. And while they're installing, we're just going to add a script here for testing. So it's called test. That's just going to run Mocha. And we need to pass in recursive and exit. This just means that it's going to recursively test inside the test directory and it's going to exit whenever it's finished. So let's create that test directory. And inside this directory, we're just going to make another one called API and another one called notes. And inside this, we're going to make a new file and it's going to be called post.js. We're going to test the posting first of all. So all of our dependencies have installed successfully. So now we can start to write our test. So we're going to require our dependencies first. So we need chai and um, don't expect and we're going to call this request but we're requiring super test this is what's going to make the api calls for us and then we're just going to require the file that we're testing which is app.js and it's back three directories here so app.js and we also need to require the file that is connected to the database, which is here. So we're just going to call that con. And again, we have to go back three directories into db and into index.js. Cool. So now we can start to write our describe. So we're just going to uh, do post notes. And inside this, we need to have a before. And inside this before, we're just going to be connecting to the database, the same as we were in the server file. So it's called connect is the method. And whenever that's finished, then we can just call done. And we need to catch errors. And we're going to be doing something similar after the tests, except we're going to close the connection because we have a method called close, which disconnects from our Mongo database. Cool. So we can go back into our test and we just change this to after. And now we can start to write our test. So we make our it and we're just going to call this okay. Uh, creating 
a new node works. And it's passing done because it's asynchronous. And now we can start by making the request with app and we're posting. And where are we posting to? We're posting to forward slash notes. And we need to send a payload along with this. And as you can see, before we were sending uh, name and text. So we're going to do the exact same thing here. And text. Cool. And whenever we send that, we're getting a promise back. So we need to do something with the response. So now that we have the response, we can get the body out of it. And now we're going to be testing what is contained in this body. So because we've posted a successful note, the body should look something the same as this. So it should have an ID, a name and text. So that's what we can do. We can say expect body dot to dot contain property ID. And we can do the same for name and text. And once that's all successful, we can call done. So let's run this and see what happens. So here our test script is test. So we can call that and we'll see if everything works. Cool. So as you can see, the first time we ran the test, it worked successfully. But what happens when we run it again? It doesn't work. We get an error. And we actually need to catch that error. If I can type. So we're catching that error. But why are we getting this error now whenever the first time we ran the test it passed? Well, this is because we are connecting to the same database and we're trying to post another note with the same name. So if I was to change the name and run the tests again, we can see that it passes. But if I decide to run it again, then it will fail. And if we look into the database, we can see that the first time it worked, but the second time it didn't work. And this is because these names of the notes need to be unique. So we have a few options. We could clear the database before we run all our tests. We could change the name of the note before we run every test, or we could not use the database at all for our API unit tests. And I think that's the best solution because Unit tests shouldn't depend on anything else except the thing they're testing. So at the minute we're testing the API, so let's just depend on the API. Let's not depend on anything in the database. These tests shouldn't care about the state of the database. They should just care about this one request. So how do we do that? Well, inside our connect function, connecting to the database, we can, instead of connecting to this database URI, which we have here, we can connect to something else. We can connect to a mock database. So to do that, we're first of all going to check process.env.node n equals test. So if this is a test, we don't want to carry this out. So let's put that inside else. So what do we want to connect to instead of this? We're going to use a library called mockgoose, which we already installed before. So we can say const mockgoose equals require mockgoose dot mockgoose. And now that we've required it, we need to wrap our mongoose inside this. So to do that, we can say equals need to make a new instance 
of mongoose and wrap mongoose inside this. And once that's done, we need to call mongoose.prepare storage. So what this is doing is it's telling um, this mongoose object what um, what model we have. So we have a note and we needed to know like the type of note and the different properties that it has. So that's what that is doing. And once that's done, it returns a promise. So we can call then. And then we can call mongoose.connect because mongoose is now wrapped inside mongoose. So we can actually use the exact same code as this. And we don't actually care what this database URI is. So we can just leave it like that for now. Cool, so that all looks okay. Um, so if it's a test, we're not connecting to our database here, our MongoDB. We're connecting to a mock database instead. But only if process.n.nodeenv .node equals test. So to satisfy this, we need to go into our test. And at the top, we need to say that this is a test. So we're setting our environment variable node n to test. And whenever it comes to connect here, we should be connecting to our mock database. So let's save this file and run it. And run the test and see how this does. So we have an error. Okay, so my brackets were just a bit mixed up here. So this bracket is for the else, and then we need that like that because that is the closing bracket for this promise. So if we save that and run again, we can see that our test is passing and we can run it again. And we can see again it's passing. And it's passing every time now because this mock database is being cleared out on every test run. So it basically doesn't have a state whenever the tests start. So we can put that back to note, and now it's not inserting into this database at all. So that's really cool. So this is a proper unit test of the API where we are only testing the API functionality and nothing else. So that's nice. Um, we have our positive case finished for posting a note. So let's make a negative case. So this time we're going to post a note, but we're not going to give it any text. We're just going to give it a name. So now um, we're just going to see what the body contains. And then we can test for that. So running my tests, we can see the first one passes and the second one, we just printed out what the text contains. So we can see the text contained an error. Um, so we can say expect body dot errors dot text. So the errors in the text field um, dot name to equal. So the error is a validator error because text is a required field of note and we aren't posting it, as you can see here. So now that we're testing for that, we can run our test again. And we can see that now both tests are passing. And if I was to change this to a different error and run our tests, then we can see that it fails. So that's really cool. Um, we put that back. So we've tested for posts and now we're going to test the get method. So again, we're going to make a new file called get.js, again inside notes. And we're just going to copy all this post stuff for now and put it in here. So we need that. We need all of the same stuff. And again, we'll change that to get. We're connecting to the database. Well, the mock database. 
and we're disconnecting. So, okay, getting notes as no notes. So to begin with, if we do a get on notes, it should be completely empty. No notes exist. Uh, we don't need to send any data. And we're just going to print out the body. And for now, we're going to comment that out. And we're going to run this test. And you can see that we get back an empty array, which is what we expected. So we can say expect body dot length. And that should be inside. So then the body is zero. And we can call it done. So we're testing for getting when there's no notes, but what if there is a note? Uh, we just run that test first, just to make sure. We can see that everything's passing. So now we need to test whenever there is a note. A note exists. Um, we're just going to say, okay, getting notes as one note. So now to do this, we're going to do a complete end-to-end -end test of the API. So first of all, we're going to post one note. We need to make sure it has text. And then we're posting the body and we don't actually care about the body. We've already tested post. So whenever we get the response, what we need to do is call request with the app dot get. And again, we're getting notes dot then we get a response. And this time we're expecting the body dot length is one because first of all we're posting this note and then we're going to get the note and we're expecting that the note will be there. So let's save that and run the tests again. And something went wrong. We forgot to call done. Just to let the it know that the tests are finished. So now we can see both our get um, tests passed and both our post tests pass. So this is really nice. We have unit tested the methods that we have on this API, the post method and the get method, and we have removed our reliance on the database. So these are really nice unit tests for the API. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.